As of now, we spoke about electric charges, which were always assumed to be point charges. We said that every single stationary point charge creates its own electric field. And the quantity of electric field is given by an equation that is derived from Coulomb's law. So if we have a point charge Q and we want to calculate the electric field at point A, a distance D away, we have to use the following equation which comes from Coulomb's law. The equation states that the quantity of charge must be divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the distance squared. So, this equation only works as long as our stationary electric charge is assumed to be a point charge. But what happens if the shape and size of the electric charge is not that simple? For example, what if we have the following blob of electric charge? How exactly do we go about calculating the electric field at point A as a result of this blob of electric charge? Well, we have to define a new relationship between electric charges and electric fields that is more general than Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law only works as long as our stationary electric charge is assumed to be a point charge. So this new relationship is given by Gauss's law. Now before we define this law, we have to discuss a concept known as electric flux. So let's look at the following diagram. Let's suppose we have a uniform electric field given by the following blue arrows. So our electric field lines are parallel with respect to our x-axis. Now let's suppose we take a very thin, a flat sheet of area given by the following green region. So notice in this case, the vector of this area points in the same direction as our electric field lines. So this face points in the same direction as our electric field lines and that implies the angle between this vector, the face vector and our electric field lines is zero. Now, in such a case when our sheet is flat and when our electric field is uniform, we can calculate the electric flux given by phi with the E symbol as the dot product of our area and our electric field. Now anytime we take the dot product that is equal to the product of the magnitude of E, the magnitude of A, and the cosine of the angle between our face vector and our electric field line. Now in this case the angle is zero so cosine of zero becomes one and in such a case the electric flux is simply the product of the magnitude of E and the magnitude of A. So we define electric flux as simply the number of electric field lines that pass through some given surface as shown in the following case. So let's look at the following example. Find the electric flux through a square surface with a side length of 2 meters if the electric field is constant and is equal to 3000 newtons per coulomb. Assume that the surface is flat and is at an angle of 60 degrees with respect to the field lines as shown in the following diagram. So now our face is at an angle and this angle is 60 degrees with respect to our electric field lines. So now to calculate our electric flux, we have to use the following equation. So we take the product of 3000, 2 squared, and cosine of 60. We have 0 0.5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 3000 gives us 6000 and the units of electric flux are newtons multiplied by meter squared divided by coulomb. Now, Notice up to this point we have discussed electric flux for the special case when our electric field was constant and when this surface was assumed to be flat. 
Now, what happens if our electric field is not constant and when our surface is not flat, as shown in the following region? Let's suppose this green region is a three-dimensional region. And this electric field, as described by the electric field lines, is not uniform. So, in such a case, to approximate the electric flux, we have to divide or cut up the surface into n number of equal elements or pieces whose surface area is given by change in A1, change in A2, all the way up to change in AN, where change in A1 is simply the first piece that we are examining. Now, each one of these pieces will have its own electric field, and because we're choosing very small pieces, we assume that those pieces are flat, and the electric field in those pieces is assumed to be constant. In such a case, we can approximate the electric flux phi e to be approximately equal to the sum of the product, the dot product between our uh, EI and our change in AI. Now, this is only an approximation to calculate the actual exact value. We have to allow our change in A to approach a very small number. In fact, if we let change in A approach zero, then our sum becomes an integral as given by the following result. So, we see that the general formula for electric flux is equal to the closed integral of the product of E and dA, where dA is the infinitely small region A. Now, this closed sign simply means we're integrating over a closed path. So this symbol is the integral over a value of E at every point on the surface of our region. Now this equation assumes that our E, our electric field, is not uniform and the A is not flat. If the electric field is uniform and if our A is flat, then we simply use the following equation. So, once again, electric flux is simply the number of electric field lines that pass through some given surface. And we're going to use this concept when we discuss Gauss's law.